Hi, I'm Renee, and you're watching Classical Commentary. Tatiana Stepanova is a highly accomplished ballerina and choreographer. She is now the artistic director of Stepanova Ballet Academy and Toronto International Ballet Theatre. As prima donna ballerina of the Odessa State Ballet Company, she was awarded the honorary title of People's Artist of Ukraine for her excellence in the art of ballet. Her worldwide artistic reputation has made her a legend in her own time. Madame Stepanova, you have led a very fascinating ballet career that has spanned from Ukraine, your beginnings in Ukraine, Russia, taken you all around the world, and eventually brought you here to North America in Canada. Uh, what, what has that whole experience been like for you? And uh, when did you know that ballet was going to become the central focal point of your life? I think from seven years old. Seven? Seven years old, Wow. Yeah. I start to dance. No, first, actually, I start piano. Piano. Learn, yes. And uh, mama took me to the uh, <coughs> teacher, piano teacher, and I started to play because it was very interesting. We have to wear beautiful dresses, go to piano, nice beautiful shoes, you know, like, and you're going with beautiful boy and you go to play piano. That's my first experience. And after I said, you know, mama, I want to try to dance. Do you come from an artistic background? No, no, no. no my, uh, my aunt was a dancer, right? Mm -hmm. But it was classical dancer, right? I see. Yes. And, but uh, uh, at that time, I didn't know this. I didn't realize, right? Uh, but anyway, and I said, Mom, I want to dance. I want to do something. And she took me to the school in Ukraine. And when they saw me, and I was very passionate, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna show everything what I can do. But before, before, uh, she took me for, uh, to the theater and I see the classical performance. I think it was Tambalina. And what effect did that have on you? I was open my mouth <laughs> and just, I look at the stage and I see how beautiful Choo Choo, how beautiful dancer. And that moment I said, Mama, I wanna dance. This is what I wanna yes, do. Yes, I wanna dance. Uh -huh. and she took me to the school and they see me teachers and they took me and after one of the teacher who actually she was dancing in uh, that performance, Tambulina, and she said, you have to take your daughter to uh, St. Petersburg, Mayinsky or Bolshoi. Mm -hmm. She has mm -hmm. talent. Wow. And that's happened. It. And, uh, and the next step, I went to Bolshoi. Incredible. That was, next. That, that was something like it's meant to be. I think it's always um, in your destiny, everything right down. I have to be ballerina. And I knew it. I, I, I know, I knew it. I, I cannot explain for you, but I want to be ballerina, but not ballerina, prima ballerina. Prima that, ballerina. yes. Okay. Leader. Not just, not no, just no, a ballerina. No, no, no. In a and I work very hard, you know, like. I put my own passion, it's day to night, crying, uh, blood in my uh, toes, you know, when I start to do point shoots, but I want to be desperate. I want to be dancing. And you achieved it? Yes. You had the opportunity to present some incredible productions like The Nutcracker on a large stage for people in Toronto to enjoy. What, what, has, what has that that role, that job entailed? Uh, for artistic director, it's give for me, no, of course, responsibility for everybody who is working with me, but I have to uh, do some beautiful production, right? And again, promote the classical ballet because I'm not doing only Nutcracker, right? Like Nutcracker for the company, but for my school, we're doing professional production like Capelli, La Female Garde, Fairy Doll. It's lots of production, what you cannot that much see here. But we're doing and actually in Blue Apple Theater. It's uh, across the uh, Sony Center, the uh -huh. big, big yeah, theater. Cool. Yeah, but uh, for me, it's very interesting because I can um, show myself in a different way, like I am a teacher and I am a choreographer. Mm -hmm. 
Before, I didn't think about. When I was dancing, I didn't think like I would be choreographer. And I, do. To use your mind no, no. I didn't think. I, I was way. thinking, yes, uh, f uh, finally I will be teacher because when I uh, work in a company, I was teaching too, just a little bit, not that much. But about choreography, I didn't think about. But my experience, what I dance many, many roles with different choreographer works, give for me this inspiration, inspiration. That, to start to think about what I can show. And I start to do choreography. And actually, this is no, very interesting for me, and work with music, totally different work like you're a dancer and you're a choreographer. But when you can see um, on stage what you're doing, if you have goosebumps or something, you see beauty, okay, that's good. But again, that moment, and after, no, next, next year I have to do better. Uh -huh. For me, company, it's corps de ballet. If you have good corps de ballet, the same like Bolshoi or Mariinsky, it's not about the principle. Because principle you can invite, right, from wherever, from all over the world. But company, this is a corps de ballet. This is a base, foundation. That's the support. It, yes, and when you can see Tori two swans and dance like one swan, you do, oh my God. Yeah. Or uh, the shades in the bayadere. It's mesmerizing. Right? Like, it's uh, mesmerizing. Uh, you see and you like, what like I, I'm talking, I have goosebumps have because this. I saw this. I do, oh my God, this is my goal, right? Because when uh, dancers from Bolshoi come to our uh, company, they have to uh, belong for them. That's right. We cannot see the difference That's that right. much because either it won't be show, right? Mm -hmm. we, you are like our, uh, like auditorium people come and they cannot see the oh this is the best dancer mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. No. They have to become exactly. Part of the and they said this for me when uh, there was uh, last last year. Yes, they said Tatiana, you have a beautiful production. But you know what? What a compliment. It, yes, it will, I like it. But uh, look, if you, this is, won't be good production, they won't become, they cannot dance in a company when they don't have the... Mm -hmm. So if you have all of these soloists who are frequently coming to dance with your company from different places, then your artists have to be well trained enough that they can be flexible. They're training adapt. with me. When well, they come from Japan, they're training with me. They're training every time in the class and I teach them, right? They got training here, and they became better dancers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can see improvement, everybody, which is it's very good for me. Like, I feel like, okay, yeah, I'm doing a good job. You received your ballet training at the world-renowned Bolshoi Ballet Academy in Moscow, Russia. Uh, that, that's incredible to me. What was that experience like for you, and how did it shape your growth as an artist? No, first of all, it, it was very, amazing atmosphere, right? A discipline. Uh, all the kids, uh, what was in the school, they are uh, choose, you know, this is what like kids special for ballet. Mm -hmm. that you cannot get on that area, like from 100 people, they can took two or yes. three, you know, for one. Uh, it's very specialized. Place. Yes, special. And of course, this is atmosphere different, right? And it's amazing teachers who dance in the um, previous in a Bolshoi company, right? Who was your teacher? Uh, my teacher was Natalia uh, Viktorovna Zolotova. Mm -hmm. She was an amazing teacher. She actually uh, trained uh, Nina Anyashvili because she, was, she is younger than Anyashvili and were four years between us. Okay. Wow. After two. But uh, she was an amazing teacher. I always thought a thousand times say thank you. And uh, right now I understand more what kind of uh, training I got it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, we have everything discipline, like partnering, character dance, historical dance, classical ballet, repertoire, mm -hmm. like even uh, modern contemporary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many hours a day were um, you training at the time? Uh, four or five. Four or five Two, hours a day. Yeah, four, yeah. Five. It's a big commitment. But you know, when you're passionate about this, when you love this, you cannot see the time. You want more, more, more. Right. And especially, look, when you're young, you have lots of energy. You dance and you want to show, I can do it, I can do it, look at me, look at me, I'm the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to be like that, right? Absolutely. If you want to get the goal. If you want to achieve. Yes. Achieve, if you want yeah. to be a prima donna ballerina, of yes, course. Yes, you have to 24 hours work. But you have to be in love with this. You know, if Absolutely. you, first of all, when, when I said to my teachers, you know what? You have to teach them to love ballet mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. when they love ballet, they will do it everything mm -hmm. for you. A teacher can often make or break an experience, right? Exactly. After they have to believe you, they have to be with you, you know, and you have to uh, give that kind of emotion, you know, like energy for them. Let's do it. Let's something to show like they is inspired them mm -hmm. for uh, today. It's very difficult, you know, like they have all the phones, they talk and it's I want to move this out. Right. We have to come to Temple of the Arts, That's Temple right. of the Classical Ballet, right. Classical Music. We live music. in an age that has so many different distractions, Yeah, right? Yes, I, I don't think so. This is plus and minus, okay. I don't want to say this is not good, but mm -hmm. this is plus and minus. Yeah. Well, for the arts, I think that you need to have that, that focus. zone of focus, focus. and focus. concentration you have to be in order dedicated. to achieve, Yes, right? the, yes, the, the, the yes, most, absolutely, right? yeah. 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 <laughs> So after your studies in Moscow, uh, you returned to Ukraine, you became prima ballerina of the Odessa State Ballet Company for a number of years and that opened many opportunities to you, especially when it came to traveling. Where did your travels take you? You cannot believe it, but twice I was in Canada, twice, huh. and 50 cities. 50s, 50 cities? Everywhere. I don't know which cities. I think some cities, they, they uh, didn't see the Russian people. They were thinking like we're beers or something. <laughs> you know, no, true, true. It was the, whereas uh, Alaska, I don't know, some very like, I mean, in the north, north, north. It was Soviet Union, right? In that yes. era. Yes. They didn't know. Italy. Italy. Uh -huh. uh, Hungary, Bulgaria, uh, Paris. Uh, I read you were in Finland as well. Finland, mm -hmm. yeah. France, uh, Japan, Japan, yeah. mm -hmm. Japan. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. I just come back from Japan. I'm going to Japan again. Oh, really? Because we have lots of international dancers. Beautiful. I, I, I did audition over there and took the dancers, and they will dance uh, this year in a Cracker production. Wow. I was in Germany and Czechoslovakia mm -hmm. and Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. And after spending time getting to know or being absorbing these different cultures. Uh, did that have an effect on your your style of dancing, your dance technique? Did did the culture? No, or ca the culture. Ca it's or? only one style. I mean, only one style. It's Vaganova style, Russian style, right? You cannot change your style because you were study, and this is, I think, one of the best style in the world, Vaganova. Vaganova. Right, Vaganova. Uh, but uh, you always can see, like I cannot concern. Okay, this is and only this, right? You have to see from another different style, what is uh, they promote, the good things, and how you can combine with your style. So what did you take away from experiences in Italy and Finland and Hungary and Japan? It's uh, interesting because in Italy you see Verona, Florence, you walk where is Romeo and Juliet, and I dance Romeo and Juliet. You see how it's inspiring. So it's inspiring. Inspiring, sure. yes, but this is different culture, culture of the arts, right? Mm -hmm. You can go to museum, you see this is again inspire you. To dance and bring something more. That's on right, stage. bring something more to the stage. And sure. the same like Paris, Edith Piaf, right? Mm -hmm. When I dance Edith Piaf, the same story. You can hear the voice of Edith Piaf, you can smell it up Paris Street. Mm -hmm. So you've danced many ballets, over 40, I think you said. 40 roles. Different 40 roles. different roles. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your favorite? Can you choose? No. I can't, because it's by the age, you know, by the uh, experience, how many uh, years you work in the theater, what, uh, like, I didn't dance right away, right? What I start, 18 years old, I start Giselle. Giselle. I dream it. I, I was just, I was, I, I don't know. But 18 years old when I dance, and when I dance 25 or 30, it's different feelings of even this ballet, right? Yes. See, and different, but your technique different, more mature, you became more master. I dance Carmen, right? When I was 26, 27, plus, plus, and after. Totally different. Anna Karenina, I danced when I was 20 years old. But when I was 30 years old, it's totally different, it's different feelings. Experience. Because even, even, like I said, this is, was seen with a child. This is my child, Anna Karenian, and I have to hug and feel like I'm mother, but I was 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Yes, emotionally I did it, but my feelings wasn't like when I had child, right. my child, right? right. See, yeah. you have to be, for some roles, you have to come to this role. You have to be more mature. Right. See, but it takes time. And I cannot say, Sleeping Beauty, uh, by Adair, you know, like, I mean, um, I dance um, Kanyo Garbunok, it's Russian 
Tell, right? Царь девица, вот моя плесецкая дед, right? Uh -huh. Swan Lake, Don Quixote, yeah. uh -huh. So your ballet career has transformed itself many times. Uh, you're now the artistic director of the Stepanova Ballet Company and you've, you're a master choreographer. You've had the pleasure of choreographing the Nutcracker Ballet, shown in Canada uh, many times, and you've had the pleasure of choreographing this over 10 times. What was that experience? What has that okay, experience been? First of all, I want to say, I have company, Toronto International Ballet Theatre. Right. This is a company uh, who is doing Nutcracker stuff, right? And I have my school, Stepanova Ballet Academy. Mm -hmm. It's different, right? What is different? At Toronto International Ballet Theatre, I combine all the kids over Ontario. They are coming to take audition, and after I see who can perform, mm -hmm. like for the, of course, for the kids role, right? And like I said uh, before for you, I'm going to different countries, see the beautiful dancers and invite uh, to this production and we will build the beautiful miracle of Nutcracker. Nutcracker. Uh, yes, 10 years I'm doing because I want to promote classical ballet. I want to promote pure classical ballet and involved uh, the kids and uh, young dancers because we have in Canada lots of young dancers but we don't have that many companies right. unfortunately and special special to dance classical ballet and uh, I start with the uh, small amount of people and right now we're almost 80 plus right sometimes I have hundred people involved in the show and the uh, every time I I do different choreography, I did different choreography because I see the dancers and I see how I can uh, show them the best way, you know, I have to show the open day talent, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was many, many choreographers, many, many choreography for me. What role does music, especially classical music, what role does it play in your life as a ballerina as well as a choreographer? Classical music, whatever, Rachmaninov, Paganini, right? Uh, Tchaikovsky, uh, Sleeping Beauty, right? Like, I mean, many. You can feel it. You know, like, you can feel it every note. What this is a classical music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever you take, some piece, like we were talking before, Chopin, Liszt, it touch you. That's right. It touch, no matter what, you're a dancer, you're not a dancer. And sometimes when I listen to this music, oh, nice choreography, I have to do this, 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 this. As right away start to some inspire me. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking, I have goosebumps. Yes, yes, it's, it's, uh, it's incredibly moving. Yeah. When you listen to Chopin, you're like, oh my God, how many choreographies you can do for this? Mm -hmm. Ravel, mm -hmm. Debussy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the great Nijinsky, I heard uh, when it came to the music of Stravinsky, uh, he would have the dancers tap out all the, the steps, mm -hmm. basically, basically to each beat, different, of, the music, different, each beat uh, of the music, right? So, so that I guess they, 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 they ingrained it, they internalized it into their system and every note meant something mm -hmm. when, they, when they heard it and when they danced it. Actually, what I can say about Nijinsky and I want to say about, about Balanchine. Please. Balanchin always, if you listen to music, it's every note he puts some movement and you can hear even, you know, every notes. It's amazing. He's, he, when uh, they ask him, uh, what is about this choreography? He this about music. You have to hear the music, notes, even pose. See, the same I think was Nijinsky. Nijinsky did more choreography and that era it was modern, contemporary, mm -hmm. yeah? And for the dancers it was unusual, but he already felt this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, have to, you have to listen the notes and feel it, what kind of feelings you have inside to say something. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. music, the music talking with you, mm -hmm. right? That's right, that's right. Uh, you talk about being inspired by Maya Pietzetskaya. Uh, what was... Maya Pietzetskaya, uh, She's an actress, it's not only a dancer. She was the queen, I think, on stage. And um, for me, I always watch, because 
I dance uh, Anna Karenina, choreography Maya Plisetskaya, plus uh, Smirnov Golovanov Erdzhenko. This is Smirnov Golovanov Erdzhenko was the uh, choreographers in our, in, um, in our ballet company, right? And I always look at, 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 at her and just see what I can take for her, but like, she is uh, one of the kind of, for me, one mm -hmm. of the kind of. You, you cannot uh, see another balloon in the same like mm -hmm. her. But we are different, different by the build. But I always can see how she works, right? What is her arms, how she looks, you know, it's very important. They say uh, she was talented at two styles, adagio and also allegro. And she had a lot of flexibility. And she more, um, she more expressive, she more expressive. Like, I mean, she, she has that emotion, like, I mean, she danced Don Quixote, Laurentia, right? When she is jumping, turning, even the uh, swan leg, black swan. You just look how she looks, only eyes, and that's it. You don't need anything. Mm -hmm. No, and you cannot say about her beautiful arms. For us, arms is our words. I always uh, say um, uh, my students, you have to look at your arms. You have to feel because you can talk. Mm -hmm. You cannot talk, yeah, but your arms, this is your words, what mm -hmm. you can say. Yeah. See, but it's like very important to give my experience through me and go to the students, right? Of What course. I got. Yeah. Of course. It's, it's my mission. Next. Mm -hmm. Ballet, it's already just a very heightened and enlightened art form, you know, but to combine it with classical music and uh, art, painting, fashion, what couture, sculptures, degree, right? yeah, everything, um, yeah. Like that, that just creates an incredible artistic experience, would you say? Uh, look, what I uh, just, I remember when I um, uh, rehearsed some roles or uh, the new choreography, I always go and look in a book, a museum, sculpture, painting, you, you give all your inspiration and something for yourself, because you have to be not only in the ballet world, you have to be all the arts. It's music, like you said, art, right? You can go, I always look at Michelangelo, look at, or Raden, how they, how he built this, this sculpture, all the figure, all the poses, it's like for ballet. Right, yeah. See, it's uh, everything combined. If you wanna be um, the, beautiful dancer you have to know many many things mm -hmm. and you choreographer are, absolutely it's all, all it's combined for you it's do more interesting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and painting this is amazing i have lots of books and i always see museum the different museum and look some i need inspire and just look and watch and of course the books you have to read the books of course <laughs> madame stepanova it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to interview you. Thank you so much for your time and for being on Classical Commentary today. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Classical Commentary. We'll see you next time, and always remember, great music makes a great day. See you next time.